Our last story reads like science fiction, but it's the science of hope in the face of tragedy. Is there a more terrifying prospect for a parent than hearing your child has cancer? But difficult as the thought of debilitating chemotherapy is, a group of doctors is urging parents to see through the trauma of the immediate treatment and consider the future. A future in which their child might want to become parents themselves. Here's Masa. Psychot Blanche is here to do a follow-up interview from the loss of 2014. And smile, don't forget to smile. Zachary Williams is eight years old. He loves to dance and his favorite superhero is Spider-Man. Zachary is vibrant, hyperactive, he's a very caring child, very sensitive child, he's very bright at school. When Carte Blanche last met Zachary and his mom Leanne Scullard, he was just a baby. And when I saw him out, just cried and I thought, thank the Lord, you know, for this medical baby, he's so beautiful. And there is something that sets Zachary apart. My mommy deserved a ovarian tissue. Chemotherapy to treat her aggressive cancer left Leanne infertile, but preserving her ovarian tissue allowed her to fall pregnant with Zachary. The first such birth in South Africa it was a landmark event in an emerging field called oncofertility. It really was one of those great things in science and medicine, which is an aha moment that led me to imagine that we should really blend these two major fields of oncology and fertility. The word was coined in 2006 by celebrated reproductive scientist Dr. Teresa Woodruff, then at Northwestern University in Illinois. Someone indicated to me that a 14-year-old boy had just been brought down from our children's hospital to attempt to bank sperm uh, because they thought he would lose fertility. And I said, well, that's just fantastic. What do we do for the young women? And that physician said, oh, well, they really shouldn't worry about that. They need to really focus on their cancer. And I thought, well, that doesn't quite make sense. Seeing a gap, Woodruff founded an international network of specialists called the Oncofertility Consortium. At the outset, it was clear that if all we did was to create scientific breakthroughs, and we wrote a paper for the New England Journal of Medicine, got a grant, and started all over again, that would be great maybe for one or two individuals. But the question was, how could this really become a broader impact to people living literally around the globe. This is a conversation I have with all my patients who still are young and want fertility and are potentially curative. Professor Georgia Dimitriou is the academic head of Oncofertility at Wits University. For example, the highest incidence of Hodgkin's is around about age 12 to 25. Those people are just starting their lives. You can often cure the cancer, but you don't want them then in their late 20s, 30s, when they may be ready to have a family to suddenly realize but we didn't discuss fertility, and you never really get a second chance at that apple. Oncofertility calls on some familiar techniques, sperm banking for male patients, egg harvesting for females, and embryo preservation for couples. But as childhood cancer survival rates skyrocket, the focus has shifted to much younger patients. <laughs> This deceptively normal family scene depends on some very futuristic medical signs. Megan Harrington Johnson and Bronson Friedman are adjusting to life outside the intensive care unit with their daughter, Mackenzie. She was perfectly healthy when she was born. She was on weight, on track for the first four months of her life. She was doing all the things that she was supposed to do. When do you realize that something is wrong? I was playing golf on a Saturday. They may phone me, she said that Mackenzie's battling a fever. I said, cool, maybe take her to the GP. The next day, blood tests revealed that what looked like an ordinary infection was something much more frightening and ushered Mackenzie into the care of pediatric oncologist Dr. Nadia Beringer. Mac was a seemingly healthy, beautiful four month old girl who had been admitted with a fever of unknown origin. I performed a bone marrow biopsy, which confirmed the diagnosis of acute myeloid leukemia. How are you feeling? <laughs> I suppose you're just shocked. Can't be us. What are we going to do? And you also, you hear that word cancer and you immediately think it's a death sentence. 
What followed was a desperate battle for Mackenzie's life. Her aggressive leukemia could only be treated with a bone marrow transplant, a life-saving procedure with long-term consequences. Guess what? I'm in remission! The chemo that children get when they are undergoing a bone marrow transplant is myeloablative. So that means it actually obliterates your own bone marrow before accepting a donor bone marrow. And so that extremely strong chemotherapy will most likely render the child infertile. Getting her vitals done. When your baby girl is not even a year old yet, probably the furthest thing from your mind are the children she'll be having one day. But in the case of little Mackenzie Friedman, this was a conversation thrust upon her parents very early in her short life. So when did the conversation then move to preserving Mackenzie's fertility? Quite late in the yeah. process, but it was very much yeah. back of mind. We really actually just wanted her to survive. In saying that, I've seen Megs and a few other friends battle with fertility problems and if there was even a slight possibility that we could give her the opportunity at a later stage to not have to go through these problems, that would be first prize. And once you have kids of your own, you realise how life-changing it is to have your own child yeah. and we wanted to be able to give her that opportunity. Where someone has been sort of in despair, then say, well, currently you're in a bad space but let's just for a moment think about the future. So we're offering them that hope for the future. Mackenzie is the youngest patient referred to fertility specialist, Dr. Chris Fenter, who brought South Africa into the Onco Fertility Consortium in 2018. Here we have something like oncology that is associated with despair and something with fertility that represents new life. Protecting Mackenzie's fertility meant a procedure that has until recently been considered experimental even in adult women, ovarian tissue cryopreservation. Maturing and harvesting eggs takes about 12 days, time some women can't afford to wait before they start chemotherapy. Ovarian tissue cryopreservation can be done in just a day or two. Mackenzie is years away from puberty, which means egg harvesting is impossible. So last November, one of her pea-sized ovaries was removed and preserved. This is a full ovary. You can even see the follicles on the outer layer. If it were a human ovary, would the size also be relatively the same? It would be smaller. This is bovine tissue, a cow ovary. Our fertility specialists have been kind enough to allow us to film the process of preserving ovarian tissue. But of course, we couldn't have our cameras getting in the way of a real medical procedure, so this bovine ovary will be our stand-in. You need extreme concentration. And at the back of your mind, you're constantly reminded that this is a child's hope. The follicles containing immature egg cells are in the ovary's outer layer, so this part must be preserved. When will we find out it's going to be effective? We will most likely only find that out in, let's say, Mackenzie's case, within 20 years from now, so... Sure. It's a long wait-and-see game. So now we're going to start cutting it into strips. Any remaining tissue is examined to assess the number of follicles present and whether it contains cancer cells that could be re-implanted later. The strips are placed in a protective solution, then slowly frozen. And this is where it will spend the rest of its life until that patient decides they want to start a family. Exactly correct. In theory, there is no limit on how long Mackenzie's tissue will remain viable. We want to start with a family. We will just go and implant some of these grafts within the site where we removed the previous ovary. Within a three to five month period, this ovarian tissue will then start functioning and will then start producing eggs. The re-implanted tissue will also produce hormones, allowing Mackenzie to have a normal menstrual cycle. Onco Fertility Research is constantly developing new insurance plans for the survivors of the future. I've recently referred my youngest patient to he was eight weeks old. Because of his age, he will require a testicular biopsy, and this is even more experimental. To date, there has been no live births 
from preserved testicular tissue in prepubertal children. Ovarian tissue cryopreservation has yielded over 200 births worldwide to date, but Zachary remains the only one in South Africa. I'm very happy that I'm born and my mommy went through a lot. If she didn't, I wouldn't be here right now. It gives me peace of mind knowing that I can go back any time and have the same procedure done. It's hard to imagine what will be possible when Mackenzie might return for her tissue. The fact that we were able to protect her future children and our future grandchildren one day is really incredible. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.